So the way that we try to apply this, though, is like I said, you know, things that are in the simple or com complicated domain, um, we we think about those as things that, while are interesting, they probably are things that um, have already been developed by other people, and so we can use best practices, right? We can use whatever a heuristic would be around that type of implementation. Um, there's probably, if you're dealing with like Ruby, there's probably gems out there that already do something like that, right? So, so it's not it's not so much about us innovating in the simple or complicated space. Um, it's really about that complex space. So, what's that glue that we need to now figure out the special sauce for that particular solution, and how do we? And so a project could spread across all of these different domains. And it's really just trying to figure out the main thing that you're working on, like where is that fit? And so I think there's also another, maybe even lesser known uh, tool set called the Warbly Map, uh, which I've been reading up on recently, which talks a lot about um, how um, different types of technologies are in different stages of acceptance or commoditization. And so using that as your decision-making process for where do you really like innovate, where's your uh, where's your differentiation? And so um, there's actually a blog post I'm working on right now around how we use um, competitive analysis to do this type of where are the where are the table stakes in the industry versus what are really the differentiating things, and then how do you use that to understand what's unknown and where can you really do something interesting? And so I, I, maybe getting really down to like an exact way that we use Kinefin is that um, when we're trying to say we are doing like an eight week engagement for a particular client. Um, we have an idea of what we need to do maybe after the first week. And so we have maybe a problem that we want to solve. Um, we haven't necessarily deep, deep dived into all the solutions that could be created or tested. Um, but we are starting to work on things. And so the things that we decide to work on first are those ones in that complex domain. And so that means like when we're doing user testing, when we're doing user research, we focus on the problems or the aspects of the problem that are so unknown rather than the things that are known uh, first. And so we actually reverse what maybe would be your gut instinct to do is you like, oh, let's just knock all these things out that are easy to do, right? Like, let's get those out of the way. But the reality is because they're easy to do, uh, you don't need to learn much about them, right? You don't need to actually um, maybe change your plans once you learn about them. Um, and so the biggest risks you have are really these unknowns. And so understanding which parts of your solution fit where, and, and where you are within that whole set, uh, that, that entire domain set, um, really helps you make prioritization calls for what you work on first. At least that's the way that, that, that we've used it. Um, I, think, I think this, again, links back to the fact that complexity theory and kind of the, the com I, you know, I've been, one of the passions I have right now is really around um, complex study, and so I've been um, doing some online courses with like the Santa Fe Institute, which has a really great introduction to complexity. Um, been reading an awful lot about complexity. I'm kind of, I guess I'm trying to put together what I would consider like my own personal degree about complexity and product management um, theory. And so um, I think we need to realize that that complexity means that there's emergent behavior, that there's things that we're going to learn as time goes on, and that something we do today may not work tomorrow, right? So, so that's that's maybe the most interesting thing to me. Um, now, uh, you know, fluid mindset people definitely work better in the complex domain. Um, but that's not to say that fixed mindset people are bad in any way, right? Like sometimes you just need to get stuff done. And so uh, if the, if that's the case where you're operating in the simple domain where something needs to just be executed on, um, it's good to know that that they're there because you can make decisions about who you hire, who you put on the project about that are good at doing this type of thing. Like if they've done that before and it's in the simple or ordinary domain, you should probably just use them. You should just have them charge ahead and do that, right? Like um, so so that's the way we try to look at all these different domains.